If you've got a Ryzen 7 7700X, or you're planning a build around this speedy 8-core CPU, you'll need a graphics card that can keep up. In this video, I'll show you three top-notch options at different price points, whether you're focused on high frame rate 1440p gaming or full 4K immersion. Let's see which GPU makes the perfect match for your next setup. Pricing and information for all GPUs mentioned in this video are available in the description below. Let's start first with the best budget GPU for the Ryzen 7 7700X. The gaming landscape has changed over the past couple of years, and the demand for powerful GPUs is increasing. Despite that, we haven't seen a lot of cards that offer exceptional performance while costing low. It's usually one or the other. Thankfully, graphics card prices are falling now, and as a result, cards like the Gigabyte Radeon RX 7700 XT Gaming OC are pushing the standards of all the GPUs in the $200 to $400 price range. Even though it's a large and intimidating card with a hefty triple fan cooler that takes up three PCIe slots, it should fit easily within cases that support full-length cards. However, I do advise on getting an anti-sag bracket to prevent damaging the PCB over time. The temperatures are very good, despite Gigabyte prioritizing silence. The GPU stays at around 70 degrees Celsius during gaming, and the fans are dead silent. This is because, by default, the fans are only spinning at 1000 RPM with plenty of headroom to adjust the fan curve and get even lower temperatures while remaining quiet. The RX 7700 XT is not to be underestimated whatsoever, as it's one of the best budget 1440p cards on the market. Games like The Last of Us, Cyberpunk 2077, Hogwarts Legacy, Starfield, and Microsoft Flight Simulator are notorious for being hard to run. And yet, the RX 7700 XT can play all of them at native 1440p without any upscaler, like FSR with a locked 60fps on ultra settings. And if that wasn't impressive enough, it can even play slightly lighter titles at a locked 60fps like Red Dead Redemption 2 in 4K with a mix of ultra and high settings. Before the RX 7700 XT, the RX 6800 was my go-to budget 1440p champion for quite some time. However, the RX 7700 XT trades blows with the older RX 6800 and has much better ray tracing capabilities. Games that become a blurry mess with ray tracing actually run decently at a locked 30 FPS on the RX 7700 XT. When it comes to the competition, the RTX 4060 Ti 8GB is the only card from Nvidia standing against the 7700 XT at the same price range, but has no chance of competing since the 7700 XT is on par with the much more expensive RTX 4070. Basically, the RX 7700 XT offers the same level of ray tracing performance as the RTX 4060 Ti and the raster performance of the RTX 4070. Overall, you will be happy with the performance that the Gigabyte Radeon RX 7700 XT Gaming OC could put out. There is just one thing that's bothering me with this card. It consumes anywhere between 220 to 240 watts of power during gaming. Normally, I wouldn't bother ranting about the 7700 XT's power consumption, but the problem is that every other competitor is way more efficient. For example, Nvidia managed to get the RTX 4070 to stay neck and neck against the RX 7700 XT while staying under 200 watts. Not only that, the RX 7800 XT consumes just shy of 250 watts. I know it's not fair to compare it against the 7800 XT, as it's a tier above the 7700 XT, but this perfectly highlights my point that the performance per watt of RDNA 3 GPUs under the 7800 XT is not good. This also makes having a power supply with two 8-pin connectors mandatory. Although, initially, many people stayed away from the RX 7700 XT due to its high launch price, it's nice that you can find it under $400 now. It's a seriously underrated GPU, and together with a mid-range CPU like the Ryzen 7 7700X, it's a killer duo for top-notch 1440p performance without breaking the bank. To sum up, what I like is the great build quality, the incredible 1440p performance, the very low temperatures, and the quiet fans. On the downside, poor performance per watt. Before we continue to my premium pick, it would really help us continue making more videos if you support us by just hitting the like button and subscribe, or even with a comment so that I know if you like it or if there's something I could do to improve next time. I promise, it costs nothing, just a few seconds. 
So now let's continue with the best premium GPU for the Ryzen 7 7700X. If you're looking for a graphics card that's built like a tank and offers incredible cooling for a high-end GPU like the 4070 Ti Super, the Asus TUF is just the answer. The physical properties are perhaps the most impressive. The backplate and fan shroud are both made of strong metal, greatly protecting the PCB from any physical harm. The Asus TUF lineup has a very distinct greyish design that's easily recognizable. Even a 10-year-old Asus TUF graphics card would look so similar to this one that it's easy to dismiss the design as boring or basic. But this design cohesiveness brings in predictability and works perfectly for those who don't care much about how their computer parts look. If you're worried about performance, then I'm glad to report that the RTX 4070 Ti Super can play pretty much any game at 1440p ultra settings at 60 or more FPS. There's still plenty of room to play games at 4K, but for the most demanding titles, I highly recommend turning on DLSS and setting it to quality mode. You can still play games like Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk at native 4K on this GPU without any issues, but the frame rate will hover somewhere around the 50 FPS mark. Thankfully, for games that are properly optimized, like Red Dead Redemption 2, you can expect around 80 FPS with everything maxed out. I didn't exactly want to draw any comparisons, but it's impossible for me to talk about the Asus TUF RTX 4070 Ti Super without talking about the ROG Strix variant. I love the ROG Strix, but Asus went all out and over-engineered an already well-made card. It comes with quite a few compromises, and the Asus TUF variant addresses all of them. Firstly, it's too big. The Tough is already a long card that can stretch up to 305mm in length, but the Strix is even longer at 336mm and becomes incompatible with a lot of smaller PC cases. Both of these cards are 3-slot cards, so they'll need a lot of vertical space as well as a GPU anti-sag unit to hold them. The Asus Tough isn't too heavy at 1.3kg or 2.8 pounds, but the Strix is 1.8kg, which is just under 4 pounds. Secondly, the Strix is priced higher than any other 4070 Ti Super and enters the RTX 4080 Super and RX 7900 XTX price category. Thirdly, both of these cards are very similar in terms of performance and features, which makes it impossible for me to justify the higher premium associated with the ROG Strix. Speaking of features, the Asus TUF model has a dual BIOS switch that can toggle between silent and performance mode. This is identical to how the ROG Strix version works, and even results in almost identical noise and temperature. The Asus TUF operates at 31 decibels with the BIOS in quiet mode during gaming, and just under 35 decibels in performance mode, all the while keeping temperatures nice and cool under 60 degrees Celsius at all times. You also get three DisplayPort 1.4 and two HDMI 2.1 ports, so you can hook up five monitors at the same time. All in all, the Asus TUF RTX 4070 Ti Super is a fantastic graphics card that delivers on every single front. It takes a utilitarian approach compared to other cards that try to do one or two things really well, while failing to acknowledge their other discrepancies. It's an engineering marvel, and when paired with the Ryzen 7 7700X, it's surely going to last a very long time. To sum up, what I like is the incredible build quality, the metal fan shroud, and the very low temperatures. On the downside, it's big in size and boring design. Finally, if you've been on the lookout for a budget-friendly GPU option for a full 4K experience, then you should highly consider the Sapphire Pulse Radeon RX 7900 XT. It's a simple-looking card with the signature Pulse branding, and just like any other Sapphire Pulse card, it's dark grey with red Pulse lines going across it. It's nothing special in the looks department, but certainly not offensive either, and should still look good in any dark PC case. It has a massive 20GB of VRAM buffer and stays relatively cool and quiet, but in my opinion, both the fan speed and temperatures are a tad higher than they should be. The fans spin at around 1400 to 1600 RPM and keep the card hovering around the 70 degrees Celsius point without making much sound. What I am definitely not a fan of this GPU is its really high power requirements. At nearly 350 watts, it becomes a concern for anyone who's conscious about their energy bill. Thankfully, the rasterization performance of the RX 7900 XT is phenomenal. Most modern games can easily run at a native 4K resolution and more than 60 FPS at all times with no upscaling. 
There are only a few exceptions, like the Alan Wake 2 and Blackmouth Wukong, which, even though run smoothly with the highest settings at native 1440p, for 4K you'll need FSR to experience more than 60 FPS. This is a recurring issue with new Unreal Engine 5 games because of poor optimization rather than raw GPU performance. Ray tracing performance is quite a mixed bag, but still very good considering the price. You can expect ray tracing performance like that of the RTX 4070 Super, which is roughly close to the price of this card. However, the rasterization performance of the RX 7900 XT is almost as good as the RTX 4080. This is because, initially, the RX 7900 XT was released as a direct competitor to the RTX 4080, which makes it even more compelling now, considering it's almost half the price of the 4080. So, if you're looking into alternatives, note that the only advantage they have is power draw. For example, the RTX 4070 Super is the only widely available option since the 4070 Ti is discounted and replaced by the RTX 4070 Ti Super. Compared to the 7900 XT, it delivers a similar experience in ray tracing, but gets floored in rasterization. On top of that, it only has 12GB of VRAM, which should be a crime on every GPU above $500. The one thing in favor of the 4070 Super is that it's a lot more efficient, because it consumes 100 watts less than the 7900 XT. In conclusion, the Sapphire Pulse RX 7900 XT is a hot and hungry 4K GPU that's a perfect pair for the Ryzen 7 7700X. Now that it's just under $650, the dream of building a no-compromises 4K PC at around $1,000 might be a reality. To sum up, what I like is the amazing price to performance, the top-tier 4K rasterization performance, and the great ray tracing performance for the price. On the downside, it's really power hungry. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped you figure out which is the right GPU for your build. Remember, you can check prices in the description below. And if you're interested in more PC building suggestions and hardware reviews, be sure to check out more of my videos. Before you go, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to stay updated, and let me know your opinion and suggestions in the comments. See you in the next one.